So the judge has denied Trump's request for a recusal in the case. Remember Trump, he wanted to have the judge dismissed from the case over the uh, connection there with his daughter and political groups. Uh, that's not going to happen. The judge says he's denied that motion for recusal, and he says he's not going to consider that again until the appellate court rules on that. So Marshawn, he's being very rude with Trump's legal team here throughout the morning proceedings. Now, prosecutors, they want to introduce some new evidence here about Trump's 2016 campaign and the National Enquirer of uh, basically saying that they made a deal to promote good stories about him. So the judge is going to allow the prosecution to bring up that evidence about the National Enquirer during the trial. So those stories were a result of the August 2015 meeting that Trump had between David Pecker, uh, who was with the National Enquirer, and Trump and uh, his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, who was a key witness in this case. Uh, so now when it comes to the jury selection, some other I issues were brought up here with that as well. The judge says he's going to ask the jury two questions. One, are you unable to serve because of conflict? And two, if they do not believe they can serve in an impartial way. The judge said that that questionnaire was very exhaustive. There's 42 questions on there asking them everything from uh, who, what they watch for media as, as to if they're part of any groups like the Proud Boys or Antifa. So they're really trying to narrow this down. So today is all about trying to find those 12 jury members that have to be New Yorkers. Uh, and they have they're also looking for uh, six that will be also on the court as well uh, in another capacity. But uh, what happens here is they're going to have a hundred of people come through and they're really trying to whittle that down. From what I'm hearing is we can see thousands of people be posed as potential jurors uh, as they go through this process. Both the Trump legal team and prosecution will also get a chance to ask these potential jurors questions as they try to weed out and get down to that jury of 12. We'll continue to follow this and bring you updates as they happen here throughout the morning. Back to you, Sean Emma. All right, John Glasgow joining us right outside the courthouse. John, thank you. We'll bring in Professor Alan Dershowitz, Professor Emeritus at Harvard Law School, author of the book Get Trump and many, many others. Professor, good to see you as always. So here's the kickoff, the start of this trial here, uh, jury selection beginning, uh, looking for 12 and six alternates. Um, can you talk to us about that report that you were just listening to by, by John? Is this seemingly going uh, as you thought it would so far? I know it's early. Yeah. It's going, as I thought it would, very unfairly against Trump. The questions that are being asked the jurors are absurd. They're asking the jurors, can you be fair? What juror in his right mind would ever say, no, I can't be fair? Uh, the question should not ask the jurors anything about their own ability to render a fair verdict. That's a decision that should be made only after extensive examination about the facts. What have you heard about Trump? What have you said about Trump? What have people told you about Trump? Have you expressed views about Trump? These are the issues. Don't ask a juror whether it can be fair. Uh, of course, a juror will always say they can be fair if they want to serve on the jury. If they don't want to serve on the jury, they'll say, no, they can't be fair, even if they could be fair. So this judge is starting out absolutely on the wrong foot. It, look, everything about this case is on the wrong foot. This is a made up crime. Um, it's a made up case. It's totally political. If you listen to CNN, though, you think it's the fairest case in the world. The CNN co commentator this morning, this is a commentator, said, oh, Trump lied. Trump lied when he said this was a politically motivated case. No, the commentator lied. Of course, this is a politically motivated case. The federal government didn't bring it. Initially, the DA's office didn't bring it. Then when there was a revolt within the office by some radical leftists in the office itself, he changed his mind. And CNN also reports, well, you can't blame the prosecutor. It's the grand jury who indicted. Duh. Grand juries never turn down requests to indict. It's always the prosecutor who tells the grand jury to indict. As the former chief judge of New York put it very accurately, if a prosecutor tells a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich, it will do so. And if the ham sandwich's name has Trump on it, of course it will indict. And the same thing may be true of a conviction, even though this is the weakest case I've seen in 60 years of teaching and practicing and writing about criminal law, it may well result in a conviction because of jury selection and because the jurors are picked from a pool, 85 percent of whom uh, uh, voted against Donald Trump and probably hate Donald Trump and are going to try to hide that hatred in order to get on the jury to convict them. All right. Some great points uh, to weigh in. Thank you so much, sir, for taking the time. Alan Dershowitz, appreciate it Thank as you. always. Thank you.